So I come from a family that has a long history of abuse among the women who have now become the matriarchs of the family. My grandfather was a total piece of shit and he failed his children in every possible conceivable way. He was a terrible father, he was a terrible husband, and he was just an overall terrible person. And if I ever needed motivation or insight on how to be a good man and great father, I only ever needed to look at him and do the complete opposite of what he did and my grandmother wasn't much better because she was completely completely implicit in all of it uh, my mother comes from a large family and all of the daughters and women in that family uh, and in my family have had to deal with some sort of uh, or form of abuse growing up whether it was physical uh, whether it was uh, mental um, or sexual and I don't tell that story lightly. I share it because one, abuse is real. And when it happens, the stories need to be shared so that people and children who have experienced it know that it's not okay and it's not normal. And it needs to be openly talked about in order to help others. And two, awareness. I think the more comfortable we make it for victims to speak out, the more uncomfortable we make it for the sick motherfuckers that are the abusers. So today I have a video that we're going to watch together and I'm going to give context and read the story behind it after we watch this video. So let's get to it. First on the news at six o'clock, the dean of a Baton Rouge school is accused of coming on to an underage girl through text messages. Corey Nash was confronted on the campus of Second Chance Academy by the girl's mother. News News Mia Monet is in the newsroom with more on the police investigation and past trouble for Nash. Michael and Sylvia, the teen's mom, tells us the inappropriate relationship started back in April. She says Nash has been making sexual advances toward the teen and even sending the girl money, hoping she'll let him touch her. Corey Nash serves as the dean of students of Second Chance Academy. Monday, mother Rainisha Cummings confronted him about text messages he sent to her 16-year-old daughter. Did you say you want my daughter? That was a joke. Yes, I said a bad joke. You want... That was a bad joke. Yes, ma'am. And what does she want to do, Corey? I probably said some other stupid stuff, but I didn't, uh -uh. But I didn't do anything. I want you to, you, I want you to tell you. And you know I did. And you know I did. And you know Cummings. The fact that... I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to let it finish. But the fact that he can stand there so snide in his... Um, in his demeanor. And they, he, can, he can stand there and feel protected. And feel like at any moment he's not going to have his fucking brains blown out is wild to me right it's wild to me but understand that this is what you're dealing with and these are the types of people that you're dealing with possibly when you send your kids to schools that and this school looks raggedy as hell i would never send my kid here honestly i don't even want to send my my kids to normal school big ass schools just because i don't have i'm out there with them and i don't have any control over what they're being taught but this here this school here looks absolutely it looks like it should be fucking abandoned and uh and remade and rebuilt from the ground up. It looks absolutely fucking terrible, but let's finish this video. Posted the video on Facebook. She says the inappropriate relationship began in April. In the video, she reads out loud several messages he sent to the teen. No, Dad, I'm in the classroom. Oh, no, no. Dad ain't on the messages. Mm -hmm. no. the back of the did she ever do that? Man? Man? I don't I don't she did it or not, Never did. Never did. You serious? You never did. You serious? Listen to him defend himself. Listen to him defend himself. He doesn't deny doing it. He doesn't deny sending the girl inappropriate messages. He doesn't deny it. <laughs> what he denies and what he says is, well, I didn't do anything with her. Because, Nick, you didn't get the opportunity. You nasty ass motherfucker. You never got the opportunity. That's what we're dealing with. So he's standing ten toes down on the fact that nothing ever happened. And you can see there in the screenshot that they had. Let me see if I can capture it again. You can see there in the screenshot the various. Right there. You can see the various payments that he sent to this young that he sent to this young lady. 
And I'm going to read her Facebook post right here. It says, if y'all know anyone that went to Second Chance Academy, that was the name of this school, please share this post. It says, Corey Nash, the instructor, Dean of Students, is a child predator. He has been texting my daughter since April, asking her for pictures, videos, and asking about what sexual things he can do to her for money. In the month of May, he sent my daughter over $1,500 on Cash App as hush money. He says that it was a joke when confronted today. He has done this to another child who says that she's scared to come forward because she's scared that she won't be received. She won't receive her diploma. These kids are scared to speak out. They're in fear of speaking out. And predators like this guy know it. Says those diplomas are not accepted at some colleges because the colleges say that they have evidence that he sells diplomas to individuals for $325 a piece. She says, I want him in jail and exposed. And my goal is to shut Second Chance down. I'm not saying my daughter is right about sending him pictures from the Internet to get money from him. That's another thing we need to talk about. She is a child. And he is an adult that knows better. He is sick in the head and should not be around anyone's children, boy or girl. Now, what she said there, I'm glad she did take some accountability because she said, basically, my daughter, listen, my daughter is not innocent in this. She's also implicit in it because she's actually sending him pictures to get this money from him. We got to be better stewards of our children. We have to be better at teaching them what not to do and how to keep themselves out of these situations. Now, I have no doubt in my mind that the girl, no. She knew she was wrong for sending the pictures. But what was she getting in return? She was getting something in return. And I tell you all the time, it always comes back down to the money. Because if the girl did not feel like she needed money to buy whatever it was that she was trying to get, I doubt that this would have that I doubt that he would have had the chance or opportunity to exploit her in this way for money. It always comes back down to the money. That's what I tell y'all. All the time when we have these discussions, when I have these discussions and I put them out there, I want this channel to be more about the things, more than just investing in a course or investing in the stock market, because it's so much more involved. There's so many more reasons to have you set, have yourself set up and your family set up financially, because I believe if they were set up, this wouldn't even be a problem. But we need to know that it's happening out here. Your kids are not safe. Protect your children at all costs. I cannot, I cannot imagine having this on my doorstep. Because I, God, so God help him. Because I don't know what, I know what I would have done. And it would have been another news story following this one. I can promise you that. But these guys are predators, and it all comes back down to the money. Yes, this girl was wrong. Yes, she should have known better. No, she shouldn't have been sending him pictures. But guess what? She was doing it for the money. You can see it right there. Let's finish watching the story. $100 in the month of May alone. She says her daughter would send him explicit photos from the internet, claiming they were of her. First day, $50. May 22nd, 600 this is not Nash's first time fighting allegations involving minors. This video from the WBRZ archive shows the Second Chance Academy in 1996 when Nash was arrested for rape of a 12-year-old student at the school. However, he pleaded to a lesser charge of simple battery, which means he did not have to register as a sex offender. These are the laws that we're dealing with. These are the fucked up laws that we are dealing with in our nation. These are the fucked up laws that we're dealing with. Why is, this, why is he even allowed to be out on the streets walking around? How? They said he had pleaded, he pleaded, he pleaded guilty, but he pleaded in a way to where he would not have to register as a sex offender. But the charge was you, you took advantage of a 12 year old girl. How was he still, how was he allowed to be among the commonwealth? These are the fucking laws that we send our children to school under. Where laws are designed to protect motherfuckers like Corey Nash. This nasty motherfucker right here. Now, he was arrested. It says 
Second Chance Academy uh, Administrator Corey Nash was arrested for having an inappropriate relationship with a student between 2009 and 2011. I don't know. I have no idea if that's going to stick because you cannot trust the laws. You're not, you cannot trust the laws to uphold justice here. We've seen it time and time again. But this is why it's important to get this type of thing out and make it known to our children that they have to speak up. They have to say something. And that's not all. Here's another case that popped up. Not too long ago, a couple weeks ago, in fact, it says a uh, middle school principal lured teen girl with grimace milkshake nuggets after meeting on Snapchat. Let's read the story. It says a New York middle school principal was charged with attempted after allegedly trying to meet up with a 16 year old girl at a remote location, bringing with him condoms, chicken nuggets and a grimace milkshake from McDonald's. It's a shame that I can't even say this word here because YouTube's algorithm is so fucked up to the point to where they're worried about that saying that word. But they're not worried about all of the other terrible content that has come across my ch my uh, page on YouTube that I've that I've seen in searches. Apparently, people guys can get on YouTube and show their whole asshole, and it's no problem. But y'all worried about saying words like this? They want to censor you. This is what they would rather do. They would rather censor you. Because it's considered to be too, too much of an emotional topic to talk about publicly. When that's exactly what needs to happen. Let's read further. It says Johnson City Middle School Principal Daniel Erickson, age 55, was arrested Friday after an investigation by the Broome County Sheriff's Office. As a father, I know this is a nightmare scenario for any parent, Sheriff said of the arrest on Monday. We entrust our schools with the care and safety of our children and to have an individual violate that trust, abuse their power, and prey on the very student charged in our school's care is beyond disgusting. Authorities said that they were tipped off to Erickson's alleged inappropriate behavior with a minor on July 5th and determined that Erickson had been communicating with a 16-year-old high school girl via Snapchat for at least a week before his arrest. He allegedly made overt comments that signaled he wanted to engage in sexual conduct with the minor, according to authorities. This is the nasty motherfucker right here. So again, you see, it's, it doesn't, there's no color barrier here. Our children are, suce are susceptible to getting money Items, toys, whatever it is, gifts. That's what this comes down to. And these men prey on that and they know that. I can get you this if you give me a little something, right? That's what's happening. It's absolutely fucking disgusting. Erickson initially posed, listen to this. Erickson initially posed as a younger adult when communicating with the un unidentified teen before telling her he was in fact the principal of Johnson Middle School. What a fucking idiot. So you're also, not only are you a pervert and disgusting, but you're also fucking dumb as hell. And use the school district database information to convince the 16 year old girl who he really was. Wow, the stupidity here. So glad you're this dumb. Erickson had repeatedly attempted to meet up with the girl before his arrest including allegedly showing up to her home. However, the girl did not go outside to meet him during that incident, according to authorities. Listen. It's, it's very real out here. Your children are not safe. They need to be protected. Since after the sheriff's office was notified of the allegations, the young girl was no longer in danger, authorities said. The principal agreed to meet with the girl in a remote location in the, in the county on July 7th with the intention of engaging in sexual relations, but he was immediately arrested by authorities. Thank God, get him the fuck out of here. Uh, he was taken into custody without incident and charged with luring a child, which is a Class E felony and third degree attempted you see it, a class A misdemeanor. 
Mr. Erickson brought with him a Grimace shake from McDonald's, chicken nuggets, and a box of condoms. Protect your children. I'm doing what I gotta do to protect mine. Do what y'all gotta do to protect yours. Protect your fucking children.